Hey everybody, Dan the Wolfman here and welcome to the range review, the brand new Rossi RP63 empty firearm here. Six shot, three inch, 357 Magnum. All right, Brass Tech Taurus slash Rossi. I I'm locked up. The six shot has not fired. I am not happy now. It's basically what seems to me like a re-release of the R461, R462, um, but modernized. It's either medium or small frame, depending on their website. It says small, but it says takes medium frame. Uh, speed loaders, whatnot. It is bigger than 856, but not by much. It seems smaller than a Smith & Wesson K frame, but larger than 856 or 605. So uh, it fits good in my hand. We'll see in 357 recoil if it pinches my middle finger too much. Uh, but three inch 357 ballistics, one of my first videos, my first revolver is, is a three inch 357 uh, viable CCW option. The ballistics you need from the three inch barrel that offer also offers the CCW carry needs that you have. This isn't your grandpa's two inch magnum that merely creates a bunch of blast and oxidation and doesn't de deliver the ballistics needed for your one shot stop man stopping power. In double action, it's smooth. So anyway, it's got a very wide trigger. The double action right now is heavy. I just kind of oiled it. The single action is very, very nice. Hopefully the double action breaks in. Still don't know what grips will fit this, what holsters will fit this. Uh, the front sight, I don't have orange paint on it yet. I will do a lot better uh, with speed and accuracy when I get some orange paint on that. Or I might hit that pin out and put the Taurus... Um, the Taurus night sight, even though this is a Rossi, Taurus owns Rossi, um, it should fit, even though it'll be shorter here. So I might put the orange night sight on it. Uh, the grips do actually feel good in my hand. It's a round butt, and this looks like it'll be a very good concealable option. Uh, it's fitting in my Relentless Tactical Generic Inside Waistband. It fits really good in my Cyclone. I think it's Biachi 111, Biachi Cyclone 111 holster. It fits really good in that, and the snap works. The holster... Uh, says two and a half inch mid-size Smith, uh, but it seems to fit good in there. So here's the Rossi, I got 125 grain XTPs. I gotta see where it hits. I got, and they're pretty warm, 125 XTPs. I got 158 grain pud loaded blazer, 158 grain jacketed hollow points, but they're uh, the blazer aluminum. And then if we're doing well with that, I might do some plinking and see where it hits with uh, 3,858 grain semi wad cutter. And then let's launch some pretty dang hot loads. Got some Remington green and yellow box, HTP 125 grain semi jacket at all point. And if I'm doing okay with that, I might launch a couple of the Underwood. Now these are standard pressure and Magnum pressure uh, nowadays is way less than it used to be back in the day. It used to be like, I think 45,000 PSI. And nowadays I think it's only 38, 1,500, something like that. Don't quote me. But anyway, they should be okay in it. They do have warnings about plus P plus 38, but that's kind of weird considering it's 357 Magnum in the manual. But anyway, let's see how she hits. And mostly I'm curious where she hits with different ammunition. Thank you. All right, guys, usually when I shoot a revolver, I shoot double action. I'm going to do the first group of single action with a 38, 158 grain seven water cutter. I just kind of want to see where they're hitting before it's trigger control issues as I learn the the pretty heavy trigger will probably break in a little bit. And I don't know if like a Galloway Precision Spring Kit works or if it's the old R462 geometry, which is different than the Taurus revolvers. I, I don't know yet. Okay, so 
Um, and I'll probably reach out to Down Hume now that I got a better idea. It seems a little bit smaller in the K-frame. Maybe I'll get something from Down Hume. All right. Splatter target, seven yards. <laughs> Looks like I hit way high. There's 158, three-inch barrel. But I was centered. Still way high, and I'm aiming center of the red circle. Six o'clock hole just below the middle. There we go. So high with the uh, 38158, but that doesn't surprise me being so slow. Got to pod loads so the barrel's rising and recoil by the time it leaves the barrel. Right now I'm going to shoot the 158 357 Blazer, but it's slow. That's pro also probably going to hit high. Usually you don't want to shoot 38s before 357 uh, because then the powder is in the end of the cylinder charge holes and that makes extraction issues and whatever. Brand new pistol, want to make sure they're all, the barrel's on tight, nothing's going to explode in my hands and whatnot. Uh, so that's why I did it, just FYI. Okay, seven yards. It's a very light revolver, 27.4 ounces. Uh, two inches left, but centered. Double action. Uh, I'm not sure where that hit. Might have been the center hold. That's this revolver stack's pretty nice, though. I'm learning it. That was dead center. Ooh, that one got away from me. Okay, so uh, learning to stack and learning to stack it quicker is pretty nice. Let's see what I did. So five out of six were good. The one that got away from me, I believe, wasn't. So anyway, one, first shot here. Second shot, I think, was there. So that's pretty good for stacking a double action. I haven't even... You know, this is what I've been looking for. A really nice six, not five shot, 357 Magnum, three inch barrel for good ballistics, not two inch that make it basically a heavy recoiling nine millimeter, ballistically speaking, on the bad guys. Uh, this is really nice, carries really well, and now I get uh, at 3 o'clock, and now I got it a Pedic style even without the pad. Sometimes with the pad, without the pad, but either way, dark shirt. I think I'm concealing it pretty dang well. Uh, seven yards still. I'll do 6 o'clock at the bottom. And hit at the bottom. Aim at the center of the red. And hit the center of the red, I think. Yep, there's two dead center. I don't know what that was. Checking a little bit. Feeling a little bit in that middle finger. And that's pretty close to defensive loads. I think I'm empty. I checked a little down. But, uh, okay, let's see. I think I got at least two dead center. All right, so now great. That, see, that's almost defensive load hotness, I think. We'll find out later. Um, two in the red. I was aiming here first, and I moved it up because I thought I hit there, and I was wrong. So two there, and then I went fast. And so when I'm jerking it, I think maybe the wide trigger, I got to get used to. Uh, it's not really like one of the revolvers. I'm jerking high and right. So uh, that's trigger control. I got to work on that. Uh, but I'm learning, and it looks like they hit. When I did my job, looks like the 125s, it's regulated too, which is what you want to carry probably. I'll try to rock and roll in a bit. Uh, it's pretty busy at the range right now. So I'm going to do single action, guys. I try to rock and roll on multiple targets a lot. Stay with me. I'm going to do single action with the 158s. We know they hit high, but I want to see single action. And I'll aim at the bottom. I'll do a six o'clock hold right at the bottom of the red. And we'll know that they'll probably end up a little high right, I'm guessing. Uh, and I'm just in the relentless tactical, even without a pad. Uh, one of the cops said, yeah, you're not really printing. So this is a good small. It seems smaller than a K-frame, a little bigger than an A56. So between a small and a real true mid-size frame. I believe she said she was security for charges, too. 
daddy church too. They don't have orange on the front side yet, which would help. Yeah, they're football. Everybody is season to season. Do you uh, work there or just go? I wouldn't go to work on my own. <laughs> I don't get to work on my own. It's fun, man. I really like. I really am digging this revolver. I am really, really digging it. Everything seems good. Nothing seems hurt. I'm really digging it. Let's see how bad a shot I am because I'm anticipating recoil. But hey, and that was the first time I had moved back to the ten yards actually. So I got one there, two there, three there. So that's really good. So I'm aiming down there. 158's hitting a little high, 158 Magnum. So that's where they all should be. And then I jerked it up a little bit, and probably that one, that one, and that one. There's a little extra one in here. I don't know how, but one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. So that's not bad. Now let's see what she can do defensively. And it seems like this trigger, I'll have to show it in the unboxing, uh, the trigger, it does, it has a heavy trigger return spring like my Tor 692 unboxing. That's 350,000 views you should check out. And these are way better than a lot of other revolvers that have false resets and can lock up. Um, so it's really important. I don't think this does. Even if I don't go out all the way, boom, it's ready, and it rotates the cylinder again. It's very, very important. All right, guys, before it gets cold, about 3 o'clock now, go from appendix, range tech, range timer. We'll see if we can get it today for the first time. Now there's some people left that can rock and roll on three very serious bad guys on hard card stock targets online.com use code dan the wolfman there xs sucks toaster holsters trying to just hook you up okay so let's see now defensively i'm not going to be as accurate or as fast condemnation of both without having the front sight painted orange i got mark three eyeballs you know mark one eyeballs or whatever so uh anyway uh here we go let's see My ears were not on all the way. Little space hurts with Magnum. Okay, but good shots on the two on the left, and she's so hot. I said, baby, put it back. Baby, baby, put that back. Baby, get, leave those losers. They're dead. Mwah. At the enclosed range here today, I hate, I hate ever having a user, but I'm towards the end of my targets. Call me, girl. All right, well, that's good data with 9, 40, 45. Well, I can shoot a 9, a big size 9, like 17 splits. I tend to like in the 22 to 25 split range because you need brain processing speed. Uh, so when you shoot a 40 or even a 357 Magnum and it slows you down to 0.34, is that really bad? Or does it allow your brain to process and take an information of which one, two, possibly three moving bad guys as well as you need to move and where's cover and where's your wife and things like that is speed really a matter so both my splits were exactly 34 and this was with 125 xtps that are probably pretty close to carry ammo as far as uh, velocity recoil um 171 a first uh hit that's not bad my first full speed appendix draw here in a generic holster that's really not bad. I got two A's on on evil Danny Glover here. Sergeant Murtaugh, why were you selling drugs, man? We knew we wondered where you were buying that boat and giving everybody cash. We wondered what was going on in Lethal Weapon 4. Uh, and I got two here. Pretty good hits there. So 171 to first shot, 205 to the second. That's 34 split. 270, that's 0.65 transition, and 304. And then I realized she was not out yet, and she started to have second thoughts. She put it back, and she ran. So, Guys, for my first run, it's really impressing me. I think the size and the weight, 27.4 ounces unloaded, um, six shots, three-inch ballistics. I'm really excited. That did really good. Considering I'm in a generic holster, I don't know whether I should use a pad or not with revolvers or the pistol. It's better if I use the pad uh, or a wedge. Uh, 
that was a great run for my first time, really. And the site's not painted orange yet. I don't have a night sight on it, which I think I'm going to do because I like it so much. I think I'm going to actually carry this and just know I fire six and moves moves to cover to draw the backup gun. Okay, so let's see what kind of situation I can get in. And out of there, I might have been off frame. And I gotta really make sure my Magnum. Magnum has a little ring. I got this going on here. I gotta admit, auditory exclusion real defensive gun use should not, you know, should save you. It shouldn't be a problem in a real uh, adrenaline state. Okay. Uh, otherwise, like people in the army that fire helicopters all the time, that and mortaring, uh, would have real issues. Let's see how it did. Guys, did I fire all one-handed point shooting style? I think I did. No, I'm really close, right? But that was like uh, you're turning the corner of a car in a parking lot, walking in, walking out, and boom, there they are, right? So one-handed point shooting to A-Zone on Evil Serpent Murtaugh. A-Zone, spine, and the long, good upper thoracic hits on this guy. And on my home girl, I got one in her beautiful, uh, you know, and then in her left testicle, and then one dead center on her spine as well. One, very close, these two, but one on the spine, and one on the spine out of six. Two out of six. Uh, two out of six ain't bad for spine shots. So naturally, this is a balanced revolver with a very good grip for that. I kind of want to, I like wood grips on a stainless revolver, and eventually maybe someone will be out there. There's someone from Thailand that would need a lot of sanding, I think, to work. So as it's set up here, especially if the night sight fits, even though that makes you hit a little high the way that night sight is designed, but if the Taurus night sight fits on it, I think I'm going to order that and have the first ever Rossi RP-63. All right, guys, I did get everything on the range tech range timer, and I think that's important because that was a pretty realistic scenario, okay? So I purposely did slow my draw down. I didn't get the left hand involved until late in the draw. I just looked at the footage once. So I purposely was slow and used mostly the primary hand. Uh, 1.98. So yes, that's a very slow draw because I'm not standing static, already prepped with my hand under my polo. But realistically, would that be fast enough to defend yourself? Yeah, probably. And the benefits of a Magnum, now the capacity is an issue, right? But the benefits of the Magnum with a three-inch barrel versus two, big difference. The three-inch is going to get me man-stopping ballistics that really are better than nine millimeter. They are. It's going to lead to more psychological steps and more macerated tissue flesh, at least in the first five inches or so of the wound. Okay, 1.98. Now I slowed down for my 34 splits to one-handed uh, 41, 42, 43. So one handed, they slow down from 0.34 splits to 0.41 to 0.42, 0.43. Um, so that's important to know, but that's still good enough. 4.66. I'm having a lot of fun with this revolver. I think it's great for someone that actually wants to carry with 357 Magnum. And I think for those want to, that want to carry with 38 plus P hollow points, you know, 110, 125, 130 grain, the good stuff. Um, I think it's great. So I'm going to try and do a build draw. I think the orange night sight, I'm not getting like the best draws all the time uh, this way, but this is a pretty easy way of carrying like I did with the Colt uh, a few weeks ago to an ice cream shop. That's how I was carrying. It's a pretty comfortable to carrying a heavy, and I keep going back and forth, uh, but I've been carrying on the hip more. I'll go to hip in a minute, but this will probably be the quicker draw. It just may not be good on the first run. <laughs> uh, it's not as, as reliable. Uh, but let's see what the time are from seven yards. It's hot with the warm 125. Locked up. The six shot has not fired. I am not happy now. Wait, I'm clear now. It was locked a second ago. Well, headshot her. Nope, I'm locked up. I'm locked up. In closed range. 
locked up. Can I dislodge the cylinder? I cannot. When revolvers go down, they go down hard. And now my happy day is not so happy. I believe what happened here, guys, was a round was not properly crimped and seated. And because of the high recoil, it uh, the bullet came a little bit loose and extended too far to actually rotate to the, the right? cylinder when hitting the, the forcing count. Uh, so I believe that was overall. merely an ammo-related issue. And hammer fisting uh, the cylinder out, but I cleared it. I got different ammo in here just in case it was an ammo issue, so I'm back to the Blazer 158. And this time I'll try and run the Bilgeo from 7 yards from concealment, but different style from 3 o'clock to see if that's how much slower that is. And now it's a sweatshirt underneath. And One shot left. Shit. Yes, I did. Still hit her. And I didn't get the times. Considering I don't have any orange yet, I'm... I just want to see if it keeps running okay with the Razor ammo. Seems like it's having issues with one brand of ammo. Uh, overall length. Again, weirdly, like my Ruger Max died uh, versus the Colt Detective video. Uh, overall length issue, maybe. I'm not sure yet. Let's do some point shooting. Some uh, bent elbow technique, I guess. I'd like you to see how those were. It's a very well balanced, good pointing revolver. Sergeant Murtaugh dead center on the spine, upper thoracic. Couldn't ask for better. I'm at three yards, guys. Hard shot. And dead center, upper thoracic, high into this. All right, 25 yards, single action. I'm going to, I just want to see if I'm going to hit. I think I'm going to, it's 38s, 158, then 125, 357 Magnum, then 158. It's pretty slow, uh, 357 Magnum. I think all the 158s are still going to hit. I actually, maybe the 38 so slow, I'll actually drop back down. Uh, so we'll see if we get four near each other or four way too high and two down low. I think, like, center mass should be the 125, I think. Uh, and, again, I'm at the top of the site. I got to paint it orange. Um, and it's getting dark. So we'll see um, center mass. I'm going to go center mass a little below, like solar plexus, if I can figure out that hold. Wow, that had some beef on it. Gun Sam's tested on my son long ago. That's one. Uh, I'm just curious to know where they hit. Let's see. Well, I guess it has a pretty good single action trigger if that's what I can do with it the first time and I've been shooting mostly double action. I got four in the A zone. It'd be five A zone on USPSA, but four in the middle box at 25 yards with three different kinds of ammo and one up high. So I think two of these definitely went up high. I'm going to guess that's the 357 Magnum 158. Uh, seems to be shooting pretty high, that Blazer Aluminum. Uh, I think these four are the pud loaded 38 because they're so slow at 25 they started to drop back down even though they're slow leaving the barrel when you're up close like in between at 10 15 they're going to hit high but this is now so slow and I think the 125s are on I, I I believe that's what happened there I'd like to know for sure but I think the 125s are on and that's probably what I would carry maybe 125 maybe occasionally a 135 a critical duty maybe a 145 old school I don't know well, guys, it's getting pretty dark. I'm going to do one, maybe two runs with defensive ammo. We got the Remington HTP, pretty shallow on penetration back in jug two, really jug three. Look at gun sounds with two and four inch barrels, about 52 to 55 expansion. And uh, that'll be the first two up there. And then the next two will be the old school 145 grain old box of Winchester silver tips. 
rest in peace, my friend. Slick 50, look at his excellent gun collection. Rest in peace, my friend. And uh, he... All right, recoil comparison test. Remington, green and yellow box, 125 grams. Center jacket at Hall Point, two rounds. Followed by old school, old box, Winchester, 145 grain silver tips. The FBI's load. I have a lot of data on it. All very, very good data. It does very well. And then two rounds of the Underwood. I'm not sure if the Underwood's going to be too hot or not. I'll just do a moderate pace here, like six yards. And it's getting really dark, so maybe we can see some flash out of this as well. Center mass, Sergeant Murtaugh. Ready? They were all lot. Uh, the Underwood's... Really hot, I think. Hey, look how dark it's getting, but you know, that's pretty good actually. There's a really small A box, all A's only USPSA, but five out of the six in the really small one and one just there. But considering they were all different loadings, uh, those are pretty dang good. Guys, I don't know if you'll see anything other than fireballs. I can barely see. It's really dark, and I might put my glasses on, and that's even worse. I got three rounds of the Remington 125, one round of the 145 Winchester Silver Tip, and then the last two rounds of the Underwood, which I think are too hot for this, probably. But let's see how I do on the range check. Range timer, three targets, two to each. Hey, guys, what's going on? Oh, 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 baby. Those underwater rely in this 27 ounce revolver. Um, you might do them at the end, though, because, you know, it's not going to make problems in the other hits. So I wouldn't put those up front at all. But you can do a staggered cylinder. I know it's controversial. I think it's an okay thing to do, especially in 357 Magnum. The gold outs are going to penetrate a lot farther. And if you had to go through auto bodies, glass intermediate barriers, uh, whatever, a gold dot bolt is going to do a lot better than a semi jacket at hollow point. Uh, too perfect on this guy. Spine and heart. Perfect there. I don't know if you can even make it out. But they're, my fingers are where the holes are right there. Too perfect here on Danny Glover, right on the spine, actually, in the smaller E-box. And then on her, recoil got to me a little bit, where one is good upper thoracic and one's a little bit too much nick in her boob on the side. Um, so I wouldn't do all Underwood because it's going to mess up your splits. If you want to do the last one or two, you could. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope we found it both entertaining and informational. Please always like and get down there in the comments. Let me know what you think of this one. Please help fight the algorithm. Stay strapped or get clapped.